So let's talk about clarity a little bit before we actually get into the language. So there are a few properties here that we're going to talk about today is that clarity is an interpreted language. It is not compiled. So what that means is that when you write clarity code, you commit that code to the blockchain as is, as it has been written. So this includes everything that you put in your source code. If you put a comment, that's also going on chain. Uh, this is different from different languages for different uh, blockchains. For example, if you look at Ethereum, where the, the language you write is Solidity. Solidity is a compiled language, which means that there is a, a program called Sol C, the, the, the Solidity compiler, that is going to take your Clarity code and convert it to bytecode, in this case, bytecode for the EVM, which is the Ethereum virtual machine. So this is an additional step that adds uh, an additional layer of complexity. Uh, another effect of having a compiled language is that the resulting smart contract that actually hits the chain is not human readable. So it's very hard to figure out what these kinds of contracts would do. Uh, Clarity, since it's interpreted, is going, to, is going to be submitted to the chain as it was written. So you can pull that smart contract then you know exactly what the code is all about. So that does not mean that you can never know what a Solidity contract uh, would look like because there are different platforms like Etherscan where you can verify a contract, right? Uh, for the people that have seen that before, but this is not part of the design of Ethereum. So this is an added feature by a third party. Uh, interpretation also makes it so that uh, there's a reduced level of complexity when it comes to executing the code, right? Because the, the Solidity compiler might have a bug and it might actually compile your code to something different from what you have actually written. And that's very difficult to verify, right? Of course, this doesn't usually happen in practice, but this, this is uh, an issue that we have to consider. Bugs in the compiler can lead to all sorts of interesting bugs uh, for the actually deployed contracts. Uh, Clarity is also a decidable language. So this is a bit technical. Uh, they also call this like non-Turing completeness. Uh, and this is also opposed to different languages like Solidity. Solidity is a Turing complete language. So we won't spend too much time talking about this because this is highly theoretical, but we can spend another fireside chat about this, or we can also bring that to Discord. So decidability um, in its bare essence allows for uh, the Clarity virtual machine to statically analyze the entire call graph of the smart contract. So that also sounds a little bit complicated, but what that basically means is that you can analyze and you can know for sure what the most amount of gas for that transaction is going to be. So with a turn complete language, you cannot know this beforehand. You actually have to run the transaction. You have to execute the code before you can figure out exactly how much gas this is going to use, right? That's why with Ethereum, you see gas estimation. With Clarity, that's unnecessary because the, the analysis can already tell you this is going to use at most this much runtime cost, which is a very, uh, very good feature. Uh, another feature of the citability is that we can also know for certain that the program is going to halt, it's going to stop its execution. So this is known as the halting problem in computer science. And this means that um, a turn complete language might never halt. That's the halting problem, right? We, we cannot know for sure until we actually execute the program. Since clarity is decidable, we know that at some point it's going to end. Well, why is that important on a blockchain? Imagine if you could somehow build a contract which execution will never end that would, could possibly stall the blockchain, right? So that's not a good property to have. Um, clarity also does not pr permit re-entrancy. We're going to talk about this in more depth when we talk about uh, security pitfalls in a later session. Uh, but basically, this means that you cannot create a loop between function calls between contracts. So if you have a contract A that's going to call into contract B, contract B cannot call back into contract A. That's called re-entrancy. And this might lead to all sorts of issues. And re-entrancy bugs have led to a lot of uh, token theft uh, throughout the ecosystem on different platforms. Uh, Clarity also does not permit underflows and overflows. So this is basically where you have a number and then you increment that number by a certain amount. And that the resulting number is larger than the number that you can store. So they call that an overflow and an underflow is the opposite. You go to a, uh, you know, you have a number of zero and you go negative. 
uh, but it, it's a number that cannot go negative or the negative number is, is too great to be able to be represented as, as uh, whatever is being stored as. So overflows and underflows are classic programming issues uh, that were all, also apparent on um, Ethereum uh, platforms. And that could lead to the effect where some user has a very low balance and then because of a withdrawal issue, it underflows and then flips around and becomes a very large number. So Clarity does not permit such things. So if any uh, mathematical operation results in an overflow and underflow, uh, Clarity will automatically revert the transaction and it will end. Another property, uh, support for custom tokens built in, which we're gonna talk about on a separate slide in a bit, and uh, also post conditions, which is a very interesting feature that uh, might be unique to stacks, only very few blockchains actually implement this. Uh, the last one, response checking, we're going to talk about in our session on control flow. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, you can click on the link in the description below to watch the full version of this lecture about clarity. For more content about Stacks, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, following our Twitter account or join our Reddit and Telegram pages. Thanks for watching.